ladies and gentlemen, I'm here today to debate the topic, this house would abolish, um, abolish all women-only universities. Before beginning the debate, I will define some of the controversial words in this motion. First, um, this house is limited to Korea only. And second, abolish is to officially get rid of and put an end to a law, system, etc., ex especially one that has existed for a long time. Third, women-only universities are universities where only women can attend, and for example, there are Ipayode and Sungmyongyode. I, as the first speaker, will talk about the policy itself and its practicality, and the second speaker, Sena, will talk about three benefits and necessity of this motion. And also, third speaker, Minhe Park, will uh, wrap up this whole debate. Um, only, just only a few years ago, the only way for a Korean woman to succeed was by going into a good uh, yode, like for example, Iwa yode and Sungmyong yode. By going to there, they can they were able to marry um, a well, a well, a rich and successful husband, and that was the way for most Korean women to um, succeed and that succeed. However, the world has changed, and now the women have more freedom to work and more um, chance to work out in the society. That's why we're saying that we should abolish all women-only universities. And our policy, the main policy, is we would abolish current women-only university system and replace it with a system for university for both men and women. Now, we'll talk about the details of this debate. Um, this, um, um, this motion will take about five years totally. First, we will give incentives to some um, schools who will first volunteer to change their system. Um, to make them change, we will give them few incentives, and these incentives uh, are like freedom for the school. Currently, the Korean government is very like restricting their universities, and the, for those um, schools who do change, we will give them more freedom to choose their students and their curriculums. We will uh, go on with we'll go on with this few first volunteer universities for two years, and then we'll look at the results and find the faults and try to change it. And then, if, um, and then moderate it and gradually apply it to every school. And this will take um, gradually change it. And uh, we have to make it all <coughs> abolished in three years. This can be seen. Um, this is what happened. No, no, thank you, ma'am. This is for. Um, this can work. And for example, the Ju Oilje system. The, the government first picked a few schools to apply Ju Oilje and see if it really works. And then when the few schools worked, we had applied it to every school around the um, country, and, I, and this is working perfectly for us. And then um, um, for <coughs> practicality, what if male students do, um, uh, do not care to attend this school? Um, we'll, uh, we have, we'll help change the school, like have more athletic activities, and also uh, so male students get attracted to this school. And also, by giving school more freedom to choose their students and curriculums, we will make sure that they will get high quality of education and professors, which is how, like, why reasons for why a uh, male uh, who wants to study really hard and under good professors can go. So both um, male uh, male can attend this school. Oh uh, yes. Um, are, are you saying that um, currently all the women-only universities does not does not have enough? I mean, good professors, good enough to teach all the ma males and females. Uh, we are uh, we are not saying that they don't have yet, but we'll try to make it much more so that people will want to go it. I'll go to that university. Well, then the next speaker, and I will talk about the um, the benefits and necessity. Thank you.
McKeon is the first speaker for the opposition side. Let's welcome him. speaker of the opposition side. First of all, I would like to st start with some of the rebuttals. First of all, they have said that, they have stated, like, Chu Uri said, as I, um, we're in the school for five days, as an example related to this, but the opposition side doesn't see how it really relates. And they have also mentioned that currently the professors and the people who are teaching at the all University, they, they, um, they stated as if they weren't good enough, but it is a known fact that in Korea, like one of the seven all women's university, Iwa Women's University, it's like among the top 10. Yes, and I would like to go on with my speech. Our team's burden is to prove this motion's impracticality and lack of necessity. I will explain the impracticality, and our second speaker, Eugene, will elaborate on the benefits of these universities. And lastly, Yoon Sung will wrap up the debate and our main arguments. Before I go on, I would like to point out a critical part of our motion. It says that it will, abo all, it will abolish the universities, not the way the schools are run. Now I will go into our main arguments. Ladies and gentlemen, what's so bad, what's so negative about all women universities that we need to abolish them now? The answer is simple, it's not. The opposition side strongly thinks that it is ridiculous to abolish all women universities in Korea. There are currently seven existing all women universities in Korea. Among them, one is one of the top 10, also known as Yuhua Women's University, and others are also doing well. These schools have, prov have proven their ability to effectively educate their students throughout history. There are countless successful women that were educated from all women's universities. They have risen up in the society and became strong, independent leaders, and are now contributing immensely to our society. It is evident that these schools are working well. They are operating perfectly fine. So why should we all of a sudden abolish these schools? The opposition side feels that this is totally impractical. Although seven universities may seem like a small number, considering the fact there are at least 3,000 3,000 students in each school, like the total number gathered up, it's really immense. If we abolish the schools, then what will happen to the extra 21,000 people? Will there be enough room in universities to accommodate and at the same time satisfy these students? Also, in the process of abolishing, financial crisis is inevitable. What will happen to all the workers that used to work in the university? Is the proposition side going to help laid off workers survive? from all seven universities. In addition, if the government decides to put the building into a different use, that would obviously cost a lot of money. No, thank you. Investment from other companies? Ladies and gentlemen, we are all rational profit-seeking people. Who or which company will be so optimistic about this future of this absurd plan that they'll be able to <coughs> be willing to invest their money and fund them? This policy is bound to reach a financial limit. Another reason why this, why this policy is impractical is the fundamental fact that the currently existing all women, all women universities are private schools. How is the proposition side going to provide enough incentives for these privately run universities to abolish their schools? They have, they have stated more freedom as the incentives, but the opposition side feels that this is really insufficient insufficient incentive for them to actually change the whole university system. You need to be aware that these universities that we're talking about are not national universities. They cannot just say, oh, we're going to abolish your school and abolish them. How on earth is the proposition side going to persuade the universities to suddenly abolish their schools and the system? The opposition side views the even practice of this policy impossible. Ladies and gentlemen, I have come up here today and clearly showed you why this policy is irrational. First, this would be abolishing perfectly fine, well-run universities, which is, as far as we're concerned, as unnecessary a policy could ever get. And second, the abolishment will result in extra remaining 21,000 people who yearn to get education. How exactly are they going to come up with a suitable policy 
that's so beneficial that we should, we should abolish our old one. Third, they're bound to reach a financial crisis. Should we really waste our money into changing schools that are just fine as it is? And lastly, the opposition side feels that just persuading the all-women universities to sudden to like change their system, will, they will like confront hardship and actually fail. So far, I've talked about the impracticality of this policy, and now the second speaker, <coughs> Eugene, will continue with the positive aspects of this university, and thus why this policy should not be passed. Thank you. However, the upside should realize that the name value of those so-called good quality women universities are going down. One more thing, the definition says we're not closing down the schools, we're only changing it, making it better. We're only ending a system. Now I will start on my arguments. There are reasons why we need to abolish all women universities. This house is ready to prove to you why all, all women universities need to be abolished. For starters, the name value of women only university is decreasing. For example, as we're of the time period in which men, women equality is stressed, and society needs women who can compete against men side to side, the benefits of all women university are gone. Because of this, the name value of famous all women universities <coughs> decrease accordingly, and it gets only increasingly hard for women, graduates of those universities, to get jobs. Society states clearly all women universities are of no use. This emphasizes the necess necessity of our policy. Next, the main purpose for women-only school has disappeared. No information. No, thank you. <coughs> the initial purpose for all women universities has been women's humanization and actualization of equality between men and women. However, the opposition side should realize that this has been already done, at least almost if not completely. In other words, the society does not require nor see the need at all for having women-only universities. Also, one should realize that when women-only universities were established, it was times when women could not learn as much as men did. The circumstances prevented them from doing so. However, now in some parts, it is the women who lead education and focus on it. They have the same chances as men do now. So in general, the main purpose of having all women universities have disappeared and taking with, taking with it the reason for it to exist. One more thing to add on this point. One should acknowledge the fact that all women universities are already in some ways like other universities with both men and women. They meet off with men from other universities and etc. We might as well change the university into one for both men and women. And so some educational synergy can be produced as well, not only just having fun. And lastly, the merits that all women universities had had disappeared. There is no use for having all women universities anymore. And also, all human universities tend to bring about radical feminism. For instance, once on the subject of the Hanyu Yonsama wave in Japan, a professor from Iha All Women University commented to those smitten Japanese women who tended to think Korean men were kind and true. This is what she said. We would not like to break the Japanese women's fantasy, but Korean men are actually selfish, childish, and does not admit how much they can lean on their wives for the extreme of the thing. Also, women-only universities tended to have a relatively big percentage of radical feminists. And these are some of the expressions they utilized while speaking of men. The dog who sits by at home. This was said by a woman critic who is a graduate of an all-women university, and also this comment. Men go foolish for hanging around with other foolish men in the army. And what comes out of going to the army anyways? Women suffer more having babies than men go to the army. This was specifically said by a woman feminist in Korea who also graduated from an all-women university 
and it's of high society class right now. Ladies and gentlemen, this policy needs to be passed. Society has no need for the radical feminism invested all over universities. In fact, it even resents it even resents it in ways of not recruiting much of the graduates of those universities in jobs. I stress my point of the necessity of this policy and once again plead to you to pass this policy. Our next speaker, Minhe, will summarize this debate as a whole. Thank you. that the current status quo is perfectly fine and the policy is not required at all. Before that, I have some things to say about what the provision slide has mentioned. First of all, women-only universities in the past were, were not set to just uh, make women be, be okay to marry men. That is certainly not true. The schools were built to provide better social status and eliminate, eliminate discrimination against women, not to get women ready to marry good men. The professors of you, the, the, the professors of uh, women-only universities are perfectly qualified. For, for instance, Iwayade <coughs> ranks 14 in professors' research and development numbers, and Sungmyongyade is 37. Private and third, private schools. The, all the women women-only universities exist in Korea. Seven universities are private schools. They certainly have freedom compared to nationally owned universities. Besides, their goal is to educate women, and that is the sole purpose that why the school why the schools were built at the first place. They will not easily give up on their purpose of existence to educate women just to gain a teeny tiny bit of bit more of freedom. <coughs> Thank you. <laughs> and also, there's more. About the Yonsama thing, that, that example is totally irrelevant. One fault of a professor does not prove that all women in universities are totally bad. Oh, forgot the case. And now, <coughs> now I'll go into, now I'll explain how this policy is not at all useful according to the current situation. Currently, there are seven women-owned universities in South Korea, and as you all know, there are tons of universities in Korea. It is thus very hard for a women-owned university to get in the top ten good universities in Korea list. However, as Heya mentioned before, Iwa Women's University was always in the top ten list actually, when Chungang Yilbo conducted studies about it. What this shows is that women-owned universities are actually doing a really good job on promoting their students to work hard. Let's first clarif clarify one thing. What was, what was the original purpose of building women-owned universities in Korea? As I mentioned before, according to each university's websites, the schools were built to promote better social status and war and eliminate discrimination against women. To be specific, Ihua and Dongdeok Women's University mentions that they will keep educating women till the discrimination against women all over the world is eliminated. The society we live in now, ladies and gentlemen, it's not good for good enough for a woman to stand tall by herself. No, thank you. A news article by Mei Kyungje interviewed a women law student, and she said that she has to study in the matter of survival. That the law field is still male-based, and it is hard for women students to actually get employed. Indeed, the percentage of women who successfully passed Sabok in 2004 was 24.38 percent, which was the highest ever. That does not mean, however, that the actual social status of, status of women was promoted. South Korea has 809 women working in the law field, whereas there are nine, there, 
whereas there are 9,647 male lawyers, prosecutors, and judges. Only 7.7% .7 are women. What we see here is a tremendous gap between women and men. Here, we can see why we need the women-only universities right now, ladies and gentlemen. The women-only the women only universities are not are built not to discourage men from reaching high status in society, but rather to help women be able to withstand the unfair competition and get rid of discrimination against women. I mean against them. The seven women only universities, ladies and gentlemen, are doing what they are built to do. <clears throat> because we still did not reach equality between men and women in the society, the women only universities still exist. The universities are fulfilling their purposes gradually. They actually contributed to the development of the society as a whole by training some of some super women. For instance, Song Gwangsun, the first Asian to win the grand prize of Italian Rossini International Walker Contest, is from Iwa Women Only University. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, women only universities are not causing any problems in the society. Rather, they are contributing to the development of the society as a whole. If we abolish these beneficial education centers, all the benefits and positive effects derived from the universities will never be promoted again. Thank you for listening. Okay, who hasn't been heard from in a while? Last week. Last week. Yes. Have you gone recently? Who hasn't gone in this cycle of the that we can I'm here. I tell you what, uh, and Bowen, yeah, sorry, one man, one female. Uh, let's do it that way. Uh, I don't care who, who does what side. I was kind of, uh, they were kind of repeating the statement that uh, the Iwayode is in the top 10 university, university. so it is, they, they think that the education level of uh, uh, women-only university is not really bad, but I, I think that you guys are only mentioning two or only Iwayode in seven women-only universities, so to represent the seven all women women only universities level of education but I don't think that it's not it you're kind of really uh, only kind of using Ihuayode as a good model of women only universities education level. I, I really want to know how about other remaining women only universities education level is yeah currently how how it is it. So I think you guys what side are we on? I said I'm for pro. For, for abolishing. Yeah. You, you yeah, but for the op. Hmm? <laughs> <laughs> no, he's actually saying that there is no enough yeah. evidence. Yeah, I'm saying that. No, when you they, they lack of kind of evidence. Yeah, that. And that is not. The he's saying that. Oh, okay. Because <laughs> they have they lack the evidence. <laughs> <laughs> you are the. You know. yeah. Okay, um, but first of all, I want to ask the proposition.
position um, that is it actually worth the cost to abolish all women only universities when um, they when currently the uh, all women uh, when the women only universities don't really cause like a detri detrimental influence to the society it's I mean it educates women and it um, you know educates women to be leaders to be uh, lawyers to be doctors so why is it so, such uh, a, a, necess a necessity to um, abolish and another point that I wanted to talk about was that they, um, the proposition said that um, to promote equality between men and women, um, we need to abolish the women in the universities. However, equality today um, in this world developed even though the women universities, uh, women only universities existed. So therefore, um, it's not like, sh yeah. So. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Speaker. Huh? Uh, I said that. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, in this house again. So far, we've talked about why the policy of the proposition side is total nonsense. Their policy is making an unnecessary waste of resources while abolishing history properly, properly running universities. So, reasons why you should oppose for this irrational policy are, first, practicality. It is very impractical to implement this policy. How will the government will really force the women-only universities to stop receiving students and abolish their own schools? Consider if our school is abolished one day by a really impractical weird policy. Will, will you guys just agree on this policy? No, definitely not. Many women leaders in this country would not accept this policy. Second, benefits. It is not beneficial for overall society. This society in the current status quo requires more time to give equal opportunity between women and men. Abolishing women only universities will aggra aggravate the situation. <coughs> Third, third necessity, the status quo is making no problems. There is, there is nothing to change in this situation. Using money to change the schools will, cannot make the problem better. It's just a waste of money. This policy is definitely unnecessary. Before I go on mentioning main clashes of this debate, I would like to point out the crucial failure of the opposition side. Uh, yeah, probably. <laughs> Well, Chung Yun, as the floor speech said, that the giving an example of Yuha Day is not a proper example because it is Yuha Day is only one of the, the seven universities of this of, of Korea. However, this motion says all, all means including Yuha Day. So does that mean that even though because other six universities are not doing well as Yuha Day, so we need to abolish Yuha Day with this motion? It's not. And I will move on to, on to summarizing the clashes of this debate. The first, deba first clash of this debate was contemporary woman status. <coughs> they, they have ass assaulted that con contemporary woman status is, is proper enough to, to make, make these women-only uh, women only universities into all, I'm not, like men and women universities. However, this woman's right takes more uh, Promoting women's rights takes more time. It is not yet. Only 24.38% 20, accepted on Korea's law, law <coughs> test, which is Sabo <laughs> Koshi. These women, the only universe, these are all. Uh, a bar exam. A bar exam, sorry. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> it was, it was, the woman only universities was a shining beacon of hope for many women in this in the history. Abolishing this university is not is not a is not a good decision. And the second clash was ways of implementing this policy. Proposition side has said that fi they will finance money and free and give freedom to these universities. However, they do not need money and freedom. What they really uh, what they re really need is. Keeping their women-only universities without this policy, these schools has made many women leaders. Their pride cannot be banished one day. 
All women universities have their distinct disadvantages as well. However, the opposition side fears and feels, co feels confident that abolishing these universities would just end up in an even worse problem. We strongly believe that this policy is not worth trying. For all these reasons, proposition, proposition side has failed to point out why this, pos why this policy is worth implementing, and our side has won this round. Thank you. prejudice with the women only universities in this society well we can't have like we can't like go into an like, employer's mind and like find out their prejudice but then I think that doesn't qualify your point either because you didn't have numeric examples either <laughs> 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 yeah, no thank you okay so and now I'll go on to uh, find, uh, point out some fallacies from the opposition opposition's arguments Okay, so the, re the major reason why the prop side wins is because the opposition side has dropped our points, two of our points. And the two are that we pointed out the phenomena in the all-women universities by saying that they, they become radical feminists, and these were proved by specific examples of all-women universities. And, and then they have lower, uh, accept, a lower rate of job opportunities by like, being discriminated by the employers, by them being prejudiced. Okay, so in the two clashes that the opposition has pointed out. Okay, so first they said that the cont contemporary woman's status is proper enough. And that, and so that we don't need to abolish all un universities. But as I said again, this is really ironic because I have mentioned that all women universities are actually decreasing the social capabilities of women by like them being not able to socialize as well with other men. And the second clash that they mentioned was, the, was that the financing of money and giving them freedom wasn't necessary. <coughs> and they keep mentioning that if you abolish all women universities, it's decreasing their quality. But then I don't really understand this because if, if guys, like, if, well, uh, when women study worse, if guys like sit beside them or something, like, they still go out and date and stuff, if, even if the, it is all women universities. And I think how that lowers the quality. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. Well, uh, are there any examples that they bec they become a radical feminist because of the women on university? I didn't say all of them. Uh, but I, 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 this is not the end. Uh, this is an example. 
Uh, but but you but also the proposition side has given up, give an example that they meet men's when they go with, like after school. <laughs> so don't you think that um, don't you think that women only universities are not the reason that makes women a radical feminist because they can meet, meet men on after school. <laughs> Because I'm just saying that it makes no difference because since they meet after school as well, um, uh, making uh, abolishing all women universities and changing it to bisexual university wouldn't, wouldn't necessarily decrease their quality. So, thank you, ladies and gentlemen.